Today, I want to talk to you guys about this, the Hearlink all-in-one digital FPV and remote control ground station from Cube Pilot. And in today's video, I want to share with you guys a sneak peek of some updates and features that are going to be coming to the Hearlink in the next couple of months. Now, if you don't know what Hearlink is, it is an all-in-one remote control and ground station system that is designed to be used with both Ardra Pilot and PX4. It allows you to transmit HD video up to 20 kilometers, control your drone via Mavlink and SBUS, as well as display that video on the screen. It also has a whole host of other features as well, and this update that I'm going to talk about today is going to help take Healing to the next level. Now, the information I'm going to share with you in today's video is based on a very early release of the firmware. It's actually an alpha release that I've been involved in testing. The features that we're going to talk about are planned to be released over the next year or so, and while some of these will come earlier than others, they are all on the roadmap for the Healing device. Now, I can't actually show you every single one of the features that is to come because not all of them are actually working in the alpha at this time, but I will be talking you through some of the new update features that are going to be included as well if I can't actually show them. Now, just before we jump into actually taking a look at some of the new updates, I just want to say if you're interested in getting yourself a Healing or the Cube Autopilot, please do check out 3DXR in the UK. They are a fantastic dealer for the Cube Pilot system, the Healing, and pretty much anything you need for your aircraft that you're building, servicing, or just want to improve. They sock a wide range of stuff for Ardra Pilot as well as PX4, and they have a huge amount of knowledge in this area of the system. So if you are interested in checking out the Healing or getting anything else, please do check out 3DXR. I will put a link to them in the description of this video as well. Okay, so to talk about these new features. Now, as I've already said, I've been given access to an early release of the firmware. Not everything is working at this point in time, so I can't show you absolutely everything, but I am gonna talk you through some of the major improvements and features that are going to be coming. Now, the healing system in this update and this series of updates, because the chances are it's gonna be more than one, has had quite a lot changed in the background. For starters, the whole radio system has had a bit of going over and they have made some changes that are going to allow some really interesting new features. For instance, the new firmware will allow the ability to dual stream your HDMIs from your ear unit. So rather than select either port one or port two, you'll have the ability to do dual streaming back to the ground station. This update also will add the ability for dual ops mode with the Healings as well, allowing up to two Healing ground stations to control your single ear unit. Now, the way this actually works is quite interesting, and rather than both the ground stations connect to the ear unit, the ground stations communicate with each other over Wi-Fi. So you have your master ground station connecting with your aircraft itself, and then your slave ground station connecting with your master one via Wi-Fi. Some other improvements to the radio system on Healing is the ability to actually adjust the frequency and behavior of the channels again. They've added this screen back into Healing settings, and this is similar to the screen that we originally had in Q Ground Control on the very early releases. This allows you to not only select the frequency that the system's on, you can select the upload bandwidth, download bandwidth, as well as choose what antenna the system is actually going to use for transmit. That's going to allow you to do some interesting things like have an Omni on one antenna and a directional on another, and then you'll have the ability to actually switch between the two depending on what setup you're looking to do. You also have an option to choose whether you want frequency hopping or not in the radio system as well. And whilst when you look at the frequency numbers, it isn't a direct reflection of the actual channel frequency, it does allow you to select different frequencies on the band and allow you to actually set your healing up so it is on a clear space. Another big improvement that is going to be coming with this update is regarding the stick resolution. Now, there were some complaints on the last firmware that the actual resolution that the sticks were being measured in was too low, and it resulted in some notchy behavior when using it with certain types of aircraft. Now, personally, I didn't have this as a major issue myself. However, they have completely reworked how this is done, and that issue has been resolved, and the overall stick resolution has been 
dramatically improved and those who were having that issue should see a big change when you update to this new firmware when it's released. Staying with the remote side of things, they've also added some other features here as well, including dead zone adjustment as well as expo adjustment for the remote sticks. When you now go into the joystick menu, you will see all these options added and you have the ability to actually adjust the dead zone on each stick axis individually, as well as then set expo directly within the remote controller rather than having to do it directly in your flight control software. Alongside the improvements of the sticks, the wheel has actually had some work as well and they've added the option to use it as an accumulator rather than have it on the traditional setup. Now this is working similar to the actual Lua script that I created for using the Heerlink with the Siegel remote control and it allows you to actually move the joystick and the output remain where you leave it rather than when you move it, it goes up and then when you leave go, it goes back to center. This means depending on what type of setup you've got, it's going to allow you to choose the best output depending on your gimbal and your camera control and this one should be welcomed by quite a lot of people. One little last thing with regards to the controls is you can now program the home button as well. Again, similar to the other buttons before, it allows you to program it via the Healing Settings app and set it to whatever feature you want it to do. Jumping over to some other features that they're going to be adding later in the future, one of them is the ability to bind the hearing to up to two different ear units and then select the ear unit that you want it to connect to. So rather than have to completely rebind the ear unit every time you connect it to a different one, you will have the option of saving up to two units in the Hearlink ground station and you can simply select which one you want to connect to at the press of a button. Alongside multiple ear unit options, they've also added the ability to update the ear unit's firmware via the ground station itself, rather than connecting to the PC. Now, a few updates back, they actually made an improvement on the Heerlink when they added Solex that allow you to update the ground station directly over Wi-Fi. However, you still had to update the ear unit via a PC or Mac. However, after this update has gone out, it will add the ability to push an update to the ear unit from the ground station direct. Now this is a new feature but it does come with one or two little limitations as well, the biggest being time. It can take up to an hour to install the first big update onto the ear unit but future updates should be much smaller and take much less time as they continue to develop in the future. However you will still have the ability to update via the old method on a PC should you want to. They've just added the ability to do the over the ear update to the ground station just to make it a little bit more convenient. Now alongside those main overall features there are a few other little changes that have been thrown in as well. One of them is an improvement to the DPI scaling on the screen and the overall image looks better after making this change and they've also added the ability now to update the apps independently of the whole system image. Originally on Healing, you had to actually update the whole system image to get the new apps whereas in the future you will simply be able to go into the Healing settings app and download app updates directly onto the unit without having to actually do the whole system update as well. And that gives you an overall idea of some of the new features that are going to be coming to Healing in the next couple of months. Now, today I have no idea how long these updates are going to take to come out. The chances are we're going to see multiple releases for these features. The first update will probably have things like the stick resolution improvements and the option to update the ear unit firmware via the ground station. And then the more complex features like the dual remote controllers for master and slave, as well as the ability for dual streaming will come a little bit later down the line. Now, Philip and the team have been working extremely hard on this one, and I know they are rushing as hard as they can to get it out, but they won't put it out until they are satisfied that it is absolutely right. These updates really do make some massive improvements to the healing system, and it is great to see continued development on this system 
even this far down its release cycle. Many manufacturers barely get any updates out at all, yet Philip and the team are continuing to support Herelink and continuing to add features as time goes on. Now, as soon as these actually enter beta, I will create a video to share that with you guys and actually walk you through the process of installing this as well, just to make sure you know how to get this new update on your system. As I've mentioned, when this update comes for the first time, you will still need to update the ear unit via your PC, but after that, you will have the option for doing the over-the-ear updates as well, but that might not be suitable for everyone because there is a bit of time involved in doing it, especially the first time. Anyway, that's it for this video. Hopefully you found the information interesting. As I said at the start, if you'd like to get yourself a here link, please do check out 3DXR in the UK. Fantastic dealer. There's also a link to the CubePilot website in the description of this video as well. Again, thank you for watching. Please do hit the subscribe button. And when the update comes out, I will share with you guys the how-to.